Hi, I'm QDC. What we're going to build today is Verlington Productions' Knight of Christ. Now this is basically a diorama out of a box, and this is in 120 millimeters. The reason why I bought this particular kit was because I just want to take a break from making armored vehicles, and so I decided that I build a, a knight. This is the first time that I'm going to build a, and paint a knight before, so I'm not quite sure how this is going to turn out. Now, this model kit is in 120 millimeter, and so this is a lot larger than the 135th scale uh, figures that I've built before, like this one over here, of the Iwo Jima diorama. Now, in 135th scale, um, I couldn't show you in other videos how I paint faces because the figures in this particular scale are very, very small, and it's extremely hard for me to actually paint a very, very small face behind the viewfinder of a camera. The camera you watch, you're seeing, you see me uh, through right now. But in this particular um, scale, I can show you how I actually paint faces. So let's go ahead and start building this kit right now. Let's go take a look inside this box. We have a plastic bag containing one figure. The details look very nice. The facial expression on this man is very nice as well, as you can well see. And we also have the base, and that looks pretty good too. I want to talk to you more about the details of this particular kit. The, this kit, all these parts that I'm pointing at, they're made out of resin, not made out of plastic. And one of the advantages of using resin is that the details are much more exquisite than using plastic. Now, the chain mail on this man's leg that I'm pointing at, you notice that the details are very, very fine, um, not rough. Now, since these parts are made out of resin, I cannot use ordinary plastic model cement because they won't glue together. So either I need to use super glue or what I'm going to use today is epoxy glue. Okay, so in this particular kit, there is no instructions in here, so I'm going to have to take a look at the pictures in order for me to figure out how to put the model together. The good part about it is that in this particular kit, there isn't like a lot of parts in here, so gluing it won't be much of a problem. Now, um, you can use ordinary tools for plastic to make this, uh, to cut the resin, um, to cut the resins out, and that's not going to be a problem. But there is something that I want to point out to you, though. When you sand these, uh, this resin kit, there's going to be a lot of fine particles and dust, which can be toxic. So, you should use a dust mask when you work with resin kits. I just glued the shield onto the man's arm, and I'm not quite sure you can see this, but I put tape to hold the shield in place. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the epoxy glue takes about five minutes for it to set. So putting this tape makes it a lot easier for me to put the shield on properly. All right, so I just assembled the figure. Now it's time for me to paint the figure. It's time for me to paint the figure. I'm going to paint the chainmail first with a color of black. I'm going to dry brush the chainmail with gunmetal color. 
Now, there's something I've got to tell you. I didn't paint the other parts of this figure. For example, this man's tunic. The reason why I didn't do that is because when I do the dry brushing, it will brush over the other parts of the painted figure. And I didn't want to do that, so I decided that I was going to work on just the chain metal first. And after that, then I'll paint the other parts of the body. I just dry brushed the chain mail and it looks pretty good. Very realistic looking. Now it's time for me to start on a tunic. The tunic itself is supposed to be pure white, but there's a problem. If I paint the entire tunic pure white, that means that I cannot use uh, highlights because the highlights on clothes, the, the brightest color can be pure white. So I have to paint the entire tunic with a darker white, an off-white. I'm going to paint the highlights now. I just finished painting the, the white highlight. I'm not sure if the camera could, uh, you can see this with this camera, but the, the white highlights are there. They're very subtle, but they're there. Now it's time for me to paint the shadows. And I'm going to paint the shadows using a gray color. Now I'm going to add even darker shadows. I'm going to paint the cross. The reason why I'm painting the cross last is because it's easier for me to paint the tunics, highlights and shadows first before painting the cross. I'm going to paint the face. I almost already painted the eyeballs and now it's time for me to paint the light shadows. The light shadows will be on the cheeks, right here, underneath the nose, the crow's feet, the forehead and a little bit under the eyebrows. I'm going to paint the highlights. The highlights will be um, painted onto the man's bridge of his nose, the forehead, the cheeks, the lower part of his lip, and just the tip of his uh, chin. It's time for me to paint the dark shadows. I'm going to paint the dark shadows in the mouth, for the eyebrow, and this a tad underneath the, uh, the nostrils. What you're looking at right now is the base. Now the base uh, came in one piece where the figure is molded onto the base. Now as you can well see I already started on painting um, the base already. What I've done was I painted the base with a light color brown and then I gave it a wash and dry brushed the ground uh, to make it look as it is right now and I already painted the armor and the boots so right now I'm going to paint the uh, clothing part I just finished painting the dead man's face and it looks pretty good you notice that I didn't put any eyeballs in his eyes and the reason why is because um, it just looks too weird for me. I just don't like to see a dead person uh, having his eyes wide open staring at you. Um, it's a matter of taste. For me, it's just too weird. So I just left the eyeballs out. Okay, so I completed building the kit, I painted it, 
And now it's time for me to show you what I think about my computer model kit. Take a look. This is the computer model kit and I like it a lot. I like both the dead figure here and also this figure right here. And one of the things I am amazed about verting the productions is how they mold the figures. This particular figure is molded as one piece along with the base. And after I painted the figure, it looks very, very impressive. It looks very realistic. And also like the figure um, of this guy right here. And I like the chain mail. And I like the facial expression on this man's face. The hardest part for me to paint is this man's tunic. Like I told you earlier, in order for me to paint this tunic, I had to uh, paint this entire tunic off-white and then use white highlights and, and gray to make the shadows, to make it look like it was a, a white tunic, which was very hard for me to do. But I pulled it off. And this is a very, very nice kit. And what I like about this kit too is this very nice, impressive sword. That completes this model kit. Now, this model kit turned out to be a, a lot more fun than I thought it would be because um, it has turned out really nice, actually. Um, I really like this model a lot, uh, especially the chainmail. It just looked really cool. Now, what you're about to see next is a video slideshow of my entire complete model kit. But before I go, as always, just because I put this video here on YouTube, it doesn't make me a model kit expert. I am not an expert. I'm just a regular guy just like you. I hope this video encourages you to build a model kit of your own. Either it's a model tank, a model figure, a model plane, a model ship, or even an automobile. It doesn't matter. In the end, it's all about having fun. Now, when you watch this video, um, i chose chosen a pretty neat song for this video. I accidentally found this particular song as I was working on this particular model. I turned on the radio as I was building this model and I found this really cool song uh, from Coldplay called Viva La Vida. It's a very um, unusual song in which when you hear the, uh, the song itself, it's, it sounds like an upbeat religious song, but if you carefully hear the lyrics, uh, you realize that the song talks about really um, um, a, a king really being overthrown by his, own, by his own people. And I thought this was very, very appropriate for this particular model. So, I'm QDC. Thanks for watching, and please, have a great day. Listen
sound.